Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. Today I'm looking at a book which comes to us from the Legal Action Group. It's called Children's Social Care Law and it's been written by Stephen uh, Naffler, Queen's Counsel, and it comes to us from the Legal Action Group. We've reduced, uh, produced and uh, reviewed many books from uh, the Legal Action Group lag in the past and this is a first class book to go with the, um, the additional uh, title on adult uh, social care law. Uh, Elizabeth and I talked about this book and for our review we've given it the title Navigating the Choppy Waters of Children's Social Care Law an authoritative new guide for lawyers and lay readers alike. And as with all of the <coughs> LAG publications, these books are very useful for people who are not represented by lawyers and uh, very, very e explanatory in terms of ex trying to put forward uh, the difficult issues that people face in this particular area. Let's have a look at the book. It's got a red cover. It's a heavy book, as you can see from the front. There is the spine. And then there's the back, and there's quite a lot of detail on the back. It runs to uh, something approaching just over a thousand pages. And you can see from the index at the back that it's by paragraph numbering. So be careful when you're trying to find anything particular uh, about this uh, subject. That's the start of the index there. And then you can see uh, the actual, uh, actual uh, subject itself, uh, the body copy there. You can see how the book is structured. You've got the uh, paragraph numbering at the side there and you do have from time to time uh, some very small, it's not a lot, but some quite small uh, footnotes. You can see a few of them there. Can I also point out that you've got a couple of things. You've got a useful little uh, index for each chapter which I found very helpful and of course we do have the key points which are set out nicely. At the front of the book we've got the main page there and you can see the main introduction which sets out what the purpose of this book is and he's talking specifically about referring to his other work the uh, community care case book. Um, the actual introduction is written in March 2018 and I'm recording this in the early summer. There are some acknowledgements there and then you get into the contents section which you can see nicely set out all the way through. There are in fact a total of uh, 30 uh, chapters I believe in total. Yes, 30 ending with inquests right at the end. Then of course there's the case law at the uh, in fact there's a table of cases there are some cases at the back specifically as well but that's actual index of cases and then after the index of cases we've got a table of statutes and then after that some statutory instruments and then some eu legislation that won't go away because we're leaving that information will be with us for a long time to come and then international legislation as well, which is also very important. This is becoming a, 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 an important feature now of many publications. And what I do like about this book is there's a proper table of abbreviations as well, which gives us some help in trying to determine what, what some of the abbreviations mean, because it's so easy to forget what some of these things actually mean. And then it can be a bit embarrassing <laughs> later on. As I said, you've got the nice index for the specific parts and then you go into the actual chapters and you can see how it's set out um, again with case law and everything else. Um, what you've got right at the beginning is a more detailed uh, set of cases that are raised and then of course you've got the key points and then the introduction and so forth running all the way through. It's an important work and very much part of the house style of the Legal Action Group and I'm very delighted to be asked to review this today because from uh, newly minted graduates to seasoned family lawyers, I suppose I'm one of the latter group now, there's many a practitioner out there who, experienced or not, has struggled to cope with the complexities of children's social care law. I, like everybody else, need a lot of assistance and this book gives it to us. Here then, um, help is at hand. Uh, in the shape and form of this brand new and authoritative text recently uh, launched by the Legal Action Group. 
and true to their traditional remit, LAG have produced a helpful and formative guide to uh, an ever-changing, ever-expanding area of law. And uh, it's bulky, it's over a thousand pages, and it's accessible though, logically structured, straightforward to navigate, and easy to use. And as I've indicated, this is useful for people who are not represented, in other words, litigants and personal unrepresented parties. The book commences with a thorough and clearly argued exposition of the core principle uh, conspicuously close to the heart of the author, Stephen uh, Naffler, Queen's Counsel. This specifically is, quote, the duty to treat the best interests of the child as a primary consideration. In other words, Section 1 of the Children Act, again, in another guise, um, paramount importance and so forth. So it's exactly the same test. And we're reminded, of course, that this principle is, is found also at Article 3 of the UNCRC, which, as the author um, points out, illuminates and demonstrates all further states, as set out, for example, in the... Um, World Health Organization Convention, the European Court of Human Rights and the U and UK legislation and case law itself. And it's surprising then, he argues, that it is not enshrined in UK primary legislation. Well, we've got other things on their mind at the moment, but I do take his point because there's a lot of stuff which is still not enshrined. And the author then calls for an overhaul of uh, children's social care law in England as has been done in Wales, and that is long overdue. Whether that will happen is another matter, but it's one of a long list of, of things that need to be done. It's a pity the parliamentarians have to go on holiday. It would be quite nice for them to get on with a bit of this, rather than sunning themselves. However, that's for another day. And however, also, after all the years the author complains, and without any more pussyfooting about, the fundamental duty at Article 3 should be enacted, uh, should it be enacted in fact, is that it requires all public bodies and private persons, all courts and all administrative bodies, to treat the best interests of the child as a primary consideration. That does not seem too much to ask, he adds, but we're still waiting, and I think we will continue to wait for the time being. But at least He's raising the matter up the political agenda. In the meantime, lawyers, social workers and other professionals dealing with child welfare and social care can enlist the strenuous and detailed advocacy offered in this book as an ally and support of, of many an argument in court. Now, the book is supported by a team of experts, including those who have written uh, individual chapters, and the author covers in detail all the issues pertaining directly to children's social care law and related services, from the National Health Service, provisions and disability, to remedies including human rights, judicial review and of course much more. Now, um, for clarity and for ease of use, almost every chapter begins with an overview or introduction. So you have a little index at the front, then you get the overview, which I think is very helpful, and then it ends with a detailed ex uh, explication of uh, relevant uh, cases, including an outline of the facts and a summary of the judgment. This is yet another feature of this guide, which we think makes it as accessible to the lay readers as well as lawyers, who will certainly appreciate the wealth of helpful references, including extensive tables of cases, statutes and statutory instruments, plus, of course, as I've indicated, European Union and international legislation and a necessary lengthy tale of abbreviations. Because one of the things which is actually quite clear to a lot of us in family law practice is the number of abbreviations we now have. And it is useful to try to have something there just in case one suddenly forgets what Kafka stands for, for instance. It is quite useful just to have that. Um, because you, the, the brain can play a funny trick. Let me conclude anyway. Um, I'm very pleased with this book, but lo now looking at the future, it's not difficult to predict that 
social care will become increasingly relevant to and available to much wider segments of the population as we age and so forth. That's from children to the elderly. All the more reason then that practitioners in particular should regard this important book as an essential purchase. I think it's important also as a final point to note that children's social care law is a companion volume to adult social care law, which is also published by LAG. And the publication date for this book is cited at 2018. Let me just remind you again, it's a heavy book. It is a paperback. There's the front, there's the spine, and there's the back. It is a heavy book. Let's just open it in the middle. I'm looking at, um, let's look at this, chapter 11. The Children Act 1989 and beyond. Now, uh, there again, you've got the standard index. Then you've got... Uh, the, basically a much more detailed overview which includes the cases and then when you go to the back of the chapter as I've indicated you just get to the back of chapter 11 right at the end you've then got uh, some useful case law which, which then is covered again by the paragraph numbering. So if you know your cases, obviously you've got a lot of cases at the beginning of the book listed if you know your cases you should be able to find them very quickly and go to the relevant area that may be of, of direct relevance to you for a particular case or for advice to a client. Anyway, on behalf of all of us practising and those involved in the court process, a big thank you again to LAG for making our lives so much easier. We are greatly indebted to you for these books and thank you again for producing a first-class work. And of course, I don't forget Stephen, who's done a wonderful job again. Thank you to all. Bye-bye.